Buying with Jewelry Maker couldn't be easier. Here's a quick overview of how to get involved. When you see a product you like and you want to purchase, you will see the graphics appear on the screen. You'll see the item code and a starting price. As time goes on, you'll see the price drop. And as viewers call in and customers add it to their baskets online, you'll also see the quantity decrease too. No matter at what point you order, everybody pays the final low price. And there's only one PMP charge on everything you purchase throughout the day. We offer you a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk whether you're purchasing for the first time or any time. Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker. Hello and welcome to Jewelry Maker's 13th birthday. Special, very special make along. I'm so excited to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm gonna be the privileged one to open up this absolutely stunning little birthday advent calendar so i get to play with what's in the contents of box one so should i just go ahead and open it up and have a little look it's absolutely stunning so you can see here these are what i've already had oh, so tempted to just to open them all i won't this is number one isn't it just number one Right, so inside your gorgeous box number one, you're gonna get this beautiful little organza bag to keep them in. And you are getting the most beautiful strand of these fresh water pearls. Look at them, look at the luster on them. They are absolutely stunning. Now, as far as I'm aware, I think the description on these is purple, is that right? They've got the softest, softest colour. So it does look in certain lights, you are getting those little purple sheens, but you're also getting these gorgeous pinks and like iridescent colours on them as well. They're absolutely gorgeous. So, because they're so versatile and you can do so much, I've decided as always, to do a little bit of wire work, because wire work is, is the thing that I love the most. So I'm gonna be showing you how to make these little earrings. They're really straightforward to do. There's no weaving involved. It is literally just bending and shaping the wire. And we're gonna make these gorgeous little earrings. You can also make a matching pendant, and I'll show you how to change the bail up on that if you want to. And then I'm gonna show you how to do a really easy link with the chain. So it is chain mail but it's just a beautiful little Mabias kind of little kind of cluster of your jump rings there. So it's a very straightforward and it's a very quick make to make. You can use as many of these pearls as you want, or you can use them quite sparingly. So you can see for the earrings, I've literally just used one pearl in the center of each earring. When it's come to the pendant, again, I've just added two on, but you can use as many as you want to just going to fill that center just with that little soft gorgeous little pearl such a beautiful color i love them so much and again with the necklace you know you could do exactly the same technique and you can make a bracelet with them as well i've just popped them on pins but you could do wrap loops with them you could do whatever it is that you want so shall we get going shall i get started with you right okay so i've cut four lengths of my 0.8 millimeter wire and I've cut this to about 20 to 25 centimetres. So I want four of them at the same length. You can adapt this to however you want. If you don't want these earrings to be particularly long, then you can use a smaller amount of wire. You can create lots of different looks with this. I've made bracelets with this technique. I've done bales with this technique. It's just a really pretty way of kind of wrapping the wire around. And in terms of your tools, you're only gonna need some minimal tools. So mainly I use my hands. My hands are my tools. But you can use um, some wire cutters. You can use some uh, little pliers. If you've got a ring clamp, that's always quite handy just to give you something sturdy to hold on to. So I'm gonna take all four of my 0.8 base wires and I'm just gonna try and straighten them out. So you can run them through your fingers, you can run them through your nylon coated pliers, whatever kind of wire straighteners you have to hand. And I just want all of those wires to run nice and parallel together. I'm gonna hold it in the center 
So I'm going to find the centre of my wires, there or thereabout, and I'm just going to start bending them all together. So I'm using it as one wire, essentially, as I bring them all together, twisting them all simultaneously. And you can create whatever shape you like with this. If you want it more oval, if you want it more rounded, I just want to get those wires running together. Hopefully you can see that okay. What I am gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna give myself a little hand. So I'm gonna pop on my wire clamp. You can use any tools, you don't need a tool, but I just find it's really easy if I just pop my ring clamp in there. It's gonna hold my wires together. And then it's gonna ensure that I can make certain that these wires are all running along together. They're not crossing over or running across each other until I bend them into the shape that I want. So I'm bringing these over to one side and these over to the other side. So we've got essentially two groups of wires and I'm just gonna check that I'm happy with that shape that I'm making. So if you want to take it off and have a little look, this is gonna be the main shape and frame of my pendant or my earring. I'm gonna pop that back in for now and now I'm going to work with the two inner wires. So you can see I've got two groups running across each other. I'm going to bring this wire, which is on the inside, up away from the others, and this one too. And all I'm going to do is just separate them out a little bit. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these innermost wires that meet, and I'm going to give it a little twist and lock it in place just one little twist, that's all you need to do to lock those wires in place. And each time I move these wires, I'm gonna use them as a group together. So if you can see here, this wire on this side is running underneath the twist. So anything that's running close to that is gonna follow along that. On this side, you'll see this wire coming across here is running over the top. So these wires are gonna come over the top to meet it. So to start off, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. I promise you, once you've done this once, you'll be, you'll be away. So I'm just gonna move them all together and move it out back slightly, just to bring them all running flush. And then I'm gonna bring these three wires, which are in their little group, and I'm gonna bring that across the top, like so. Now, every now and again, if you want to get your pliers and just give that a little flatten, just to make sure that they're running nicely next to each other, and then not crossing over. And then we're just repeating that for as many twists as we want. So I'm bringing in the two wires on the inside, on the middle, I'm just locking them together by giving one twist. You can go either direction, clockwise, anti-clockwise, whatever you wanna do, just one little twist to lock them in place. These wires on this side, so essentially on my right hand side, if I was holding it this way up, are gonna go and follow this wire underneath here. So I'm just bringing them over all together. I open them out slightly just to bring them all running nice and flush together. And then these on the top, bringing them all the way over. Now you can bring them over one at a time, but I find it's much easier to just bring them over all together and then they all run nice and straight. You can open these wires out as much as you want. So I haven't got them fully at a 90 degree angle there. I've got enough that's creating this lovely twist. But obviously the wider I open those out, that will slightly change up the shape and the form of those lovely little wraps that I've got there. And we're gonna go again. So taking those middle wires closest into each other, one little twist to lock it in place. Again, if you want to, you can just come in with your nylon coated pliers and just flatten them down. These ones on one side are gonna follow underneath. So they're gonna go underneath that wire coming over, making sure they're all nicely in line together. These through on the other side, bringing those three over the top. So I've created that twist. So I've got essentially three little loops there. You can do as many as you want. If you want to make it longer, you can do. Hopefully you can see that, really straightforward to do. As I say, I've done bracelets, I've done um, bales with it. You can do whatever you want. 
if you're happy with the length that you've got obviously if I'm making earrings I want to make sure that they're the same so I'm going to be using the same amount of twists on the next earring that I make and try and shape that at the bottom to the same I'll take this out of the clamp now because it's all lovely and held in place so you can see so far what we've done hopefully you can see that nice and clearly so we've got our little loop of the wires at the bottom all in held in place by those lovely little twists and now I'm just going to make a very simple little wrap loop bail now again you could do um, a figure of eight weave if you wanted you could do whatever type of bail you wanted with this but as I'm going to turn this into an earring I want it fairly sleek fairly simple so I'm going to take if I turn it over you'll see this wire here closest to the top on the underneath this is the wire I want to use so I'm going to straighten this up so put a little bend in it so that's going to be running straight up the top and I'm going to make my wrap loop with this but I'm going to use these wires to lock it in place so these wires that are coming over the top here are going to be the first to come over so I'm literally just taking them all together all the way round so they're hugging that wire and then with my cutters I'm going to give them a little trim now I'm only going to leave a couple of millimeters I don't want it too far over this sticking out the other side I will probably suggest that you kind of cut them one by one and I'm just going to snip those wires and then with a pair of pliers any will do chain those flat nose i'm just gonna squish that down so i'm gonna keep looking at this side and checking they're still sitting close together have i got some wider pliers to hand doesn't really matter these will be perfect and i'm just going to give it a little squish just to hold on to that if you can see that there now these ones sticking up I'm going to do exactly the same only this time these are going to bend over the top of the ones that I've just brought round so again just holding it with my hand with my finger give it a nice sharp bend so I'm kind of catching those wires underneath and then in with my cutters and my cutters I'm using the flush side of my cutters I'm just going to trim so you can see I've got quite a lot of lengthy tail end there. If I wanted to make quite an elaborate bale, I could do. If I wanted to cut my wire shorter to begin with, I think these were probably about 20, 25 centimeters. But that is enough for me. So again, I'm gonna come in with my pliers, push that down. I just want to make sure that I am catching that wire in place but also that there's no sharp ends sticking up if i'm wearing these as earrings which i'm hoping to do at the end i don't want them to catch in my hair i don't want them to catch against my skin so i always just tend to run my finger gently over the back just to make sure that that's nice and flush against the wire and there's nothing sticking up and now i can just turn this one little wire into a little kind of loop so again, I'm gonna straighten that up again. I really want that to be right in the middle, if you can see there. And I'm gonna take my um, round nose pliers or my bail step pliers. For this, because I'm making earrings, I want my loops to be perfectly the same. So I'm gonna use the bail step pliers for this. If I was using my round nose pliers, all I would do is just make a note either mentally or even with a little pen on where I'm going to turn that wire and that means my loops going to be the same the next time I come to do it on the next earring so you can see with your uh, round nose pliers they are tapered so they get smaller at one end and the higher up I go closer to the handles and to my hand they get a lot wider so what will happen is if I want a larger loop I'm coming up to the top if I want a small loop I'm coming down to the bottom with the bail step pliers I'm going to pick which size I want so I'll probably go for maybe this one in they'll be nice nice size so I'm just going to hold it so my wire is coming right the way through the top of those bail step pliers and I'm going to bend it over in one direction doesn't matter which but so it's got a 90 degree bend I'm then going to reposition my hand so if I hold it upwards like this hopefully you can see above okay I'm going to bring this wire all the way around the size of the bail that I want 
reposition my hand again and keep bringing that wire around. So I'm essentially making like a little scarf. If we see if this is the person's head, this is the neck, this is gonna be the little scarf. It's gonna run right across. And I'm gonna make a wrapped loop on that, which is gonna be really, really sturdy. So taking a pair of pliers, again, any will do. I'm just gonna hold across that little loop and that's gonna hold it in place. And then I'm going to come in with another pair of pliers and I'm going to make a wrap loop by bringing that all the way round. So you can see this wire, it's 0.8 millimeter wire that I'm using, but it's still nice and soft and malleable, I'm not fighting with it. I'm just turning those loops. And I'm going to fill the space between the loop and the kind of neck of that E ring. So I'm taking it round in half turns, over to one side, bringing it the other. So I'm just holding this wire towards the end and I'm doing little half steps in it, half turns, just so I can make sure that my wire is running flush, neatly against each other. I'm not wrapping over, I'm not looping those together. They're just each wrap, each coil effectively is just sitting next to each other. And that's echoing those shapes and curves as well in the wire. So it should give you quite a nice finish. When I've filled that space, I'm then going to come in again with my cutters and I'm just going to trim off just that tail end like so. And with a pair of pliers again, just coming in, just with the chain nose, and just tucking that in, making sure there's nothing sharp or sticking out. Now this is basically ready to go. All I need to do is attach on my earring hook and my beautiful pearls from box number one. So to do that, I'm gonna take a smaller gauge of wire. I'm gonna use a weaving wire, which is a 0.4, but a 0.3 will do. You'll probably need less than 10 centimeters for this. So all I've done here is just popped it on a little bobbin, um, and that just, I find it quite easy to work with, but you can cut that into sections if you want to. Um, in fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut a little piece off here. So I'm going to take the inner circle and I'm going to thread that wire up between. And then with my thumb, I'm going to hold on to it, that little tail end, just to give myself something to hold on to. And I'm going to bring that weaving wire and essentially sew with it. We, we have moved into the Sewing Street studio, haven't we? So I'm going to do a little bit of sewing with the wire. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it and wrap it round. Now, I like to secure a wire three times. I think three is a good number to make sure everything's sturdy. So I'm just gonna pull it round and up. So that's essentially on once. Don't worry if it moves around a bit, it's good to keep hold of that tail end just so you can hold it in place. I'm gonna bring it round again, back through that little gap in between so I'm just attaching it on to that first little circle. That's twice. And then one more for good luck. So bringing that round, wrapped it on three times. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with a pair of pliers and just tuck that in just nicely make sure that that wraps nice and neat and I'm going to cut off that little tail end so bringing that over and I want to trim nice and close but I am just trimming just that tail end and then with my pliers I've got these lovely little bent nose needle nose pliers which I find really good for just getting in to all the little fiddly bits I'm just pushing that wire against the pendant. I do honestly think having a good set of pliers is, um, you know, it just makes things so much easier. I used to go with the, the advice of buy cheap and if you wear them out, you know, you're gonna use them and you can then invest in a, a, a more expensive pair. I find it's not necessarily the expense, but the, the shape, and obviously you want a good pair of cutters that are gonna cut your wire really cleanly. 
So all I've got to do now is add on my pearl. These holes in the pearls are a really good size. You'll find you'll be able to add most gauges of wire onto that. But because we've got a lovely small 0.4 millimeter wire, that's gonna go on no problem. So all I'm gonna have the hardest thing to do now is just choose which pearl I want to use. Because obviously they are natural. They come in lots of different kind of shapes. You, although they have one color to them, essentially because they're natural you know you are going to get natural different shades in these i love that one because it seems very kind of rounded so i love that shape so i'm going to just thread this little pearl onto this 0.4 wire i want this for the earrings i want it to run across horizontally but you could attach it at the bottom and at the top and you can add more pearls on to fill that space do what Ever you want you know that's the joy of wire work even if you follow these instructions everyone's going to make something slightly unique and individual to them and yeah you can you know always if you wanted to have a look at it and think no I want to add more on all you need to do then is just take off this little bit of weaving wire and, and re re-thread it on so I've got my pearl in place I want to to go horizontally so it's going to go across this side so again I'm just stitching essentially around that inner wire so I'm threading it through again if you've got tools you can you can use it, your tools just to kind of poke it through if you need to just holding it in place I kind of would like that wire to be a little more taut so if it's not just kind of reposition so I'm actually gonna use my tools just to take that back out a second just because I want that wrap to be a little bit tighter across. It is, there's no rush, you know, take your time on it, make it as neat as you want. Obviously, I'm, I'm showing you fairly quickly. Um, it is a quick make, but I think that's a little better for me. So I'm just gonna take the time just to reposition. When I'm happy, you can see I'm just holding it in place with the back of my finger there or the front of my finger rather just to kind of keep that wire nice and taut it is a thin gauge of wire so do be gentle with it but you know if if god forbid it snaps then you you've got what five or ten centimeters of wire that you you can just you've wasted essentially it's it's you know not the end of the world I'm going to just carry on with that, so I've wrapped that once, back up. So I want my kind of stitches kind of going in the same direction, but it really doesn't matter. Just guide your wire, you will find it might want to kind of kink and curl, so you just want to kind of just be a little bit, not forceful with it, but you just want to make sure that you're wrapping that taut. So just give it a little bit of a, a delicate pull in the direction you want it to go. And then I'm just gonna do one more just to secure, and then I can cut off and add it to my earring hook. And then it's just a case of um, making that chain to go with it. So in terms of your bail, this part is your bail, the thing that's gonna go through your chain or attach onto your earring hook. You can do whatever you want with that. You can, as I say, if you have a little look at the pendant, I've done a figure of eight bail with that one. Um, but this works just as well if you wanted to just attach this onto a little jump ring too. So when I'm happy I've got my pearl in position, I'm gonna come in again with my flush cutters. Hopefully you can see my hands aren't in the way. And I'm gonna just give it a little trim, just snip the tail end off. And then again, with my pliers, always just make sure that I've tucked in any sharp bits and that is in the position that I want it to be here. I'm quite happy with that. In terms of creating your next earring, what I would do is I would get my four wires again, I'd cut it to the same length, so 20 centimeters, and I would shape it and keep this one as a guide. Whenever I make earrings, it's always quite important for me personally that they are mirror symmetry. 
so they are matching on each side and also that they are as symmetrical as possible in terms of size. So I would use my, my one that I've made first as a little guide. Often what I like to do is if I'm making earrings, I make them at the same time. So whatever I do to one, I'll then do to another. And that's usually because I kind of make it up as I go along, to be honest. So I'll think, well, which way will that work? And then I'll copy that in a mirrored position on the opposite side. These are very uniform. And once you've done that little weave and plait, it's gonna be the same on whatever earring. So it's gonna, it's gonna match very, very easily um, and it's gonna look really, um, just really straightforward. Whatever it is that you're doing, it's, it's gonna match. So now I can add on my little earring hook. So I'm just gonna take my earring hook and I'm just gonna give it a little turn up. You can also make your own earring hooks as well if you want to. Um, you know, you could even add one of the pearls on to your earring hooks just to give it that extra finish. And then I'm just gonna close that over there. So I've already got my gorgeous earring ready to go. And as I say, the next one I make is gonna be exactly the same method. So they're gonna be very, very symmetrical. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with that. What I will do is I will show you how to make the little chain using just some jump rings and some pins. So what I'm gonna do for now is I am gonna take this off because I'm gonna show you how you can use exactly the same method to make that as a bail for a pendant as well. Um, you don't have to do anything different to make your pendant with that. So I'm gonna make essentially little Mabias kind of flower links. So I'm taking two sizes of my jump rings and I'm gonna take five of one size. So I'm using, I think the outer diameter on these are about an eight. Um, so inner diameter is probably about a six. It really doesn't matter what size jump rings that you use with these. I think, you know, all that will do is it will just change how large your clusters are. So I'm gonna start working with five little jump rings. Now the way a jump ring is created is it is wrapped along um, like a little dowel essentially and cut so when you first get your jump rings out the back you might find that they are slightly staggered if I can hold one up to the camera to show you an example these actually all seem very perfectly closed but quite often you will find them like this if you can have a little look at my hands so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure every time we open and close our jump ring we're going to do it properly so I want it like we're opening or closing a door we're either going to open it away from us or towards us we're not opening it out if we open out our jump ring this way what's going to happen is we're going to compromise the integrity and the shape essentially the sturdiness of that jump ring so every time we open it up and down away from us kind of like this it's going to keep that shape and keep that strength so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two pairs of pliers. Now, everybody's different in terms of what, you know, what pliers they feel comfortable with. I just like two pairs of any. So whether it's a chain nose, flat nose, as long as I've got two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my jump rings. So I'm going to open up four of them and close one perfectly. So to open it up, I'm going to use as much surface area of that jump ring as I possibly can. So I'm just going to give it a little twist, you see here, just towards me. So I'm not opening it up much, just a couple of millimetres. If I'm opening it too wide, and I will probably show you one as what not to do. If I'm opening it out, I'm going to start putting a load of stress and a load of pressure on this part of the ring. And again, that's going to weaken it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take lots of the surface area of my jump ring and give it a little twist towards me just by a few millimetres. It's going to be more than enough to be able to put everything on together with each other. So I'm opening in four up, like so and I'm keeping one perfectly closed. So this one already looks closed, but I'll just give it a little look by eye. So I'm gonna use one open, sorry, four open, one closed. So I'm gonna pick up one, which is my closed one. And because I've prepped these already, just by sitting and turning them, I can not have to pick them up and put them down. I can literally just pick up with my pliers because it's sticking up from the desk facing towards me. And I'm gonna hook one, through that closed one. And now I'm gonna close up my jump ring 
by just taking it in the opposite direction. So if I open that door towards me, I'm just gonna take it away from me to close. And what I will try and do is I'm gonna take it just slightly past that point where it's due to close and then it should snap back. If it doesn't, give it a little wiggle. So now I've got two of my jump rings joined together. So I'm gonna hold them together as one. I'm gonna pick up another open and I'm threading that open jump ring through both of those now closed ones. Again, taking my pliers, i am opened it towards me, I'm just gonna close it away from me. Do you know whether you could see there, I took it just slightly past that point where those two ends meet, and as I let go, it closed nice and perfectly. So now I've got three jump rings, and I'm just gonna hold them all together. You can hold them in your fingers, you can hold them with your pliers, but I'm holding them essentially as one, picking up the next open jump ring and hooking through again all of those. So those last three jump rings all going round and then closing that up. So I've got that perfectly closed jump ring and now I've got all four together and another one left to go. So again, I'm gonna put this through the center of all of them and then close that back over. Now what I'll do is I'll just drop it down on my mat and then just give them a little bit of a knock together and I'm gonna make this lovely little shape. So just have a little fiddle with it and get them into position. So I've got my perfect first little spiral and I'm gonna make as many of those up as I wish. To connect them to each other, I'm going to take two slightly smaller jump rings. So these ones I'm using here, I think the outer diameter is about a six millimetre. So the inner diameter will probably be about a four. It really doesn't matter as long as I can get them over them all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of the smaller jump rings, open them up exactly the same, doesn't have to be too wide. And I'm just going to hold my little kind of flower spiral and I'm going to hook that all around one side of them and close that back over. See, I give it a little wiggle then just to perfectly close it. And then with the next one, so I'm adding two of the smaller ones on and that's gonna make these be my kind of connectors. Sliding it all on. And closing that over. So you can see here, if I, if I gently pull on these two little jump rings at the end, you should be able to see it creating that little spiral, like a little friendship knot. They're very, very cute, very, very pretty. And I think because they've got that kind of floral organic shape, they just lend really well to this make. Personally, I think they look gorgeous with the pearls. So I'm going to keep repeating that process until I've got the length of what I want. So, you know, you don't have to make this into a chain for a necklace. I have because I want to dangle my gorgeous pendant off it. But you could make that as a bracelet as well. You could do whatever you want. You're going to get plenty of pearls in this. And by using other components, you kind of really making the most essentially of what's in your kit. So you can really kind of use them as sparingly as you want to, or you can go to an abundance with them, which is kind of what I've done. Less isn't always more, is it? Sometimes you just gotta use them all. So I'm now gonna get some little pins. Now you can do wrap loops, and you could use maybe a 0.6 millimeter wire. I'm gonna make some lovely little pearl connectors, and I'm gonna do that with my, um, really straightforward, I'm just gonna use some eye pins. So you can have um, eye pins and ball pins. Your eye pins are these little things. So you can see they've got like a little eye shape, like the letter I, like a little lollipop. And that means if I can turn a loop on the other side, I can make a double connector with them. So they're really brilliant to use. I think they're one of the most 
useful fundamental pieces of jewellery kind of equipment you can have. Um, if you were using a ball pin that would have like a lovely little ball tip finish on it and I think if you were making some little dangly drop earrings then your ball pins would be perfect but for this I want them double connectors so I'm going to use an eye pin. So I'm going to take my beautiful pearl and I'm just going to slide that on to my eye pin and this is what I love about these pearls the hole in the pearl is is really quite substantial really sometimes you get some gorgeous gorgeous um, beads and pearls and it's it's tricky to utilize them in an awful lot of things unless you've got a very thin piece of weaving wire but these have got quite a nice size hole in them so you can see the pins that I'm using are fairly sturdy and I'm getting those pearls through that pin no problem so to make my wrap loop uh, my to turn a loop essentially I'm going to use my round nose pliers I'm going to need some cutters and I'm going to use a normal pair of uh, chain nose just to turn this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that loop so it's kind of facing up to me and then with my pliers I'm going to bend so I'm bending essentially to 90 degrees on that pin now don't worry too much if it turns or it spins round you can flatten it out again at the end but what I've done is by keeping this facing up and bending it in that direction when I turn this loop it's going to sit nice and neat on the top so that's why I bend it first with my cutters I'm going to trim off and I'm going to leave about a centimetre of the wire here and I'm just going to keep hold of it with my fingers so as I snip I'm not losing that, it's not firing off into the distance and I don't hurt the lovely camera people who are looking after me today. So I'm then going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to check this is nice and flush. If I have this sticking out you can see here when I come to turn that pin this bit's not going to be turned this is going to be sitting poking out and a bit flat so I'm going to keep it fairly to the close end of my um, round nose I want a fairly small loop so I'm going towards the end of my pliers I'm going to just gently pop my finger on the other side just to make sure it's nice and flush and then I'm going to hold that pearl in between my finger and my thumb to hold it in place and then going to give it a little turn towards me. So I've got my hand and I'm turning my knuckles up towards me, which is giving me this kind of little curved part. Once I've curled that up, I'm just repositioning my hand and I'm just doing little rotations all the way around until I've made a little kind of loop. So I'm kind of like a bit like revving an engine on a bike not like you ever really seen I've never been on a motorbike don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> but I'm just showing you that you're not having to put too much pressure on your hand you're just turning that round to make that little loop on the other side if you need to straighten it out a bit just pop your round nose pliers back in and give it a little knock and turn it to straighten and then if they're not running fully parallel all you need to do is if you can see here I'm going to just take two ends of those loops and I'm just going to give it a little twist between my pliers just to make sure that it's running nice and parallel in the same direction and I'm going to make enough of those to fit in between those lovely little jump ring kind of my bias spirals so again I'll show you how to do that again because I think we've got plenty of time so I'm going to hold my little loop so it's kind of facing upwards towards me and that way when I bend the pin to a 90 degree angle just pushing it away from me at the moment that should essentially turn that loop nice and close and nicely at the top of that pearl holding it in between my finger I'm cutting off about a centimetre just trim that little end off hold it in position and then with the round nose I'm going to make sure it's nice and flush I'm going to give it a little turn reposition my hand all the way round until that little loop closes itself if I need to reposition because these pearls are natural you're not going to get 
perfectly rounded shapes. Each one's gonna be individual and gorgeous. So you can see this one looks like a tiny little leg. It's so gorgeous. I'm just gonna turn that loop so it sits. Hopefully you can see that I've got a similar size loop on each end. I'll do another one because you can see how quick and easy they are to do. And this is a nice thing you can do when you just kind of batch making essentially you know you could be sitting in front of the tv watching jewelry maker or whatever it is that you want to watch and you can just be opening up a little pile of jump rings you could be just turning loops for your pearls um, really straightforward nice and easy giving that a little turn all the way around again if i need to straighten that back up just gonna pop my round nose in and give it a little knock just to make it central and close that over. So now I have the lovely task of just attaching them to each other. So here's some I've made earlier. You can see just something I did while sitting watching the telly, really easy. And I'm gonna attach these lovely little loops we've made on the pearls to those six millimeter outer diameter jump rings or the smaller jump rings so you can open up the jump ring but I personally find it a lot easier just to open up the little loop on the pill so I'm gonna just flick it up gently like I would have done with the jump ring little twist open it up slide it on to the small jump ring If you need to you can just open it up a little bit more don't want to open it too much just enough to just hook it on and then I'm gonna make sure that that's fully closed by closing that over so closing it by moving it in the next like opposite direction towards me to open a way to close and then I'm gonna pick up my next little pearl and I'm gonna flick that open and I'm gonna attach that to the other jump ring on the other side. So the smaller jump ring, making sure that I'm just attaching it to that one. I'm not catching any of the larger ones inside of the spiral. Just sliding that in with my pliers, closing it over. And you can see this is gonna to come together really, really quickly. So I'll keep going with that going to open up the other little loop on the other end of the pearl pick up another one of my jump ring little chain mail sections and closing that over picking up another opening it up and sliding that on a really nice nice therapeutic thing to do personally I find but I think that's the case with with all jewelry making when you've got something that's nice and tactile you've got these beautiful components like the luster on these pearls are just just stunning and I think obviously I'm working here with silver sterling or silver plated metals the colour of these pearls I think would look beautiful on rose gold, they would look gorgeous on a, a gold gold, a champagne colour, they'd look even stunning on a copper, they, they are very very lovely and you've got a, such a lovely tone to them. Um, they've just got very soft purples and beautiful soft pink luster to them, um, the colour's just gorgeous. So I'm using the silver, but which what, whatever your heart desires, um, it's, it's going to be really versatile. So I'm just pushing that down just to give myself a little bit of space between the loop and the pearl. And, and then coming in with my pliers just to close it over. And this bit, you know, can be quite repetitive, but I think that's, that's what makes it quite therapeutic when you're making something and you can do the same thing over and over and over. It kind of, for me anyway, it lets my mind just kind of switch off. I just focus on, on what I'm doing, um, drown out any of the children's TV or whatever that's going on in the back of my house. <laughs> um, so I think whatever you do with this, this number one, 
I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, do share your make, so you know that will help inspire other people as well. So if you have bought this gorgeous advent calendar, birthday calendar, and you see what you've got behind window number one, and you think, uh, that's not what I want to do with them. I want to do something completely different. Then please share it in the Share Your Makes um, group because then we all get to have that little bit of inspiration. I'll look at what you've done and think, oh, that's gorgeous. And then I these might just come home with me as well. And then I, I might make something else. Um, so yeah, do share your makes, do help inspire each other. Um, and if you do give this a go and decide that actually you do want to make along with me today, then please, please, please let me see what you've done. Um, because you'll probably do an even better job than I will because, you know, you won't be under the hot lights of the studio with the camera watching. You, <laughs> you'll, um, you won't have sweaty little hands like me. You'll just be in the comfort of your own home making. So, you know, take your time with your jewellery, but do share it so we can all see. Just picking up that smaller jump ring just to give myself something to grip onto. You can see there it's already coming together. I think this would make a beautiful bracelet. I'd probably just attach on a little toggle clasp or something with it. Um, we will keep going and then I'll show you, you know, how we can attach that um, pendant that we made. So I would keep going for the length of, you know, however I wanted. You could add a little bit of chain to the back of this as well if you, you know, want to make kind of like an extender chain so it's more adjustable. If you're gifting this to some very lucky person, then you might want to pop that extender chain on, whether it be on a bracelet or on a necklace, and you've got that kind of adjustability there. What I would say is work with an odd number. So I want it to be even. When I hang my pendant off the middle section, I want whatever's on the other side to be even. <clears throat> so I need that center point. And that may, way, regardless of the length that I make, it's gonna hang really nicely. So in terms of adding this on, you could do a different bale with this, or you could just come in again with another smaller jump ring. The position that we've got that bale at the top, which we've been making for the earring, means it will hang forwards and hang really nice if I just add another jump ring on. Um, but you can twist that if you want it, if you wanted it to face in another direction. So I'm just going to open up a smaller jump ring there. I'm going to get that central little Mabias cluster. And I'm just going to link this jump ring again through the middle. So I'm just kind of holding it with my fingers just to kind of cluster them together. And then before I close it over, I'm just going to attach my pendant on really, really easily and give it a little close. And you will see now it would hang facing outwards so a really straightforward and easy make to do I will show you very quickly how to do a different style bend uh, bail so if we have a little look at the one on um, the stand there you can see I've done a little figure of eight bail with that so again I'm gonna cut my wire so I'm gonna cut my wire again I probably, you could do it longer. You'll see there that the bale is a little bit longer. So you could cut it to about 25 centimeters. And you could also add extra wires in if you wanted. I'm using four as the base wire, um, but you can, you can, you could add six if you wanted. So I'm gonna very quickly just cut about 25 centimeters of my base wire you can see what i'm doing there is just running it through my nylon coated pliers just to straighten it up that's just ensuring i'm not getting any kinks in it really when i start the smoother and flatter it is the easier it's going to be to work with so i'm just going to line them up against each other or against my ruler just so i've got the same size
I always tend to use a little bit more wire than I need. Um, I mean, it does depend what I'm working with. If I'm working with a silver sterling, it's, it's, it's expensive. So you'll tend to find with my designs, the, the flowy ones will always be the ones that are silver sterling because I don't want to cut it, I don't want to waste it. So I'll be like, I'll make this into a spiral, I'll make this into a twirl. Um, I like to be savvy and cost effective. Um, but when you've got something, um, you know, maybe if you're working with a copper, um, or a, a plated wire, then you know you get some amazing colour remain kind of wires which keep its kind of colour and lustre and it doesn't tarnish too easy. You can afford to use a little bit more than you think you need to, especially with a weaving wire because at the end of the day, with base wires, you can't add more on. You can cut them and make them smaller, but you can't add more on. So I'd always just use a little bit more than you need to. So I'm gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna start bending it fairly central and I'm just gonna bend all the way around till I've got the shape that I want. I'm gonna make this a little bit more kind of teardrop shape, I think. And I'm gonna just keep them together, holding them all together. I am gonna use my ring clamp because I don't want them to kind of slide out of position. So I'm, any wire clamp, even like a kind of bulldog grip or something, like a big paper clip type thing would probably do. Or you could use a little bit of tape. I'm gonna get the shape that I want and I'm gonna just very quickly, I'm gonna show you how quick this is to do. So just doing exactly the same technique as I did before. I'm gonna take the inner wires, I'm gonna twist once. I always try and twist them in the same direction. So the first time I twist them, that's the way they continue to go. I'm taking the wires under and over and pulling them out into almost 90 degrees. Taking the inner wires, twist to lock. Every now and again, I'll come in with the pliers just to make sure that they're flattened, they're running parallel with each other, and I'm following the direction of the wires. The wire here closest to this set of three is going underneath. So that's gonna go underneath. Sometimes I pull it all out together just so that you can see they're all running fully parallel and really flat. And then I'm gonna take these ones and I'm gonna run them across the top. Again every now and again just making sure they're running nice and flat reposition them if they move that one's been a little bit cheeky but that's okay i've caught it before you know i've found which is the inner ones i can just hold that in place with my thumb give it a little twist and we'll do one more so i'm holding them all together pulling them all as one and then these ones are going over like this. So now I can do what I did before where I can attach my gorgeous little pearls in the middle. You know, you could even if you wanted just attach on to the inside of the wire one of the little kind of links that we made. I'm going to show you how to do a different bail with this. So these were really simple and works fine for earrings and works absolutely fine on your necklace as well if you want it. But if you want something a little bit more elaborate, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those inner wires just like before and I'm going to give it a little twist to lock. And then I'm going to close these over just like before, but I'm going to keep these two wires to play with. So this is what I'm gonna do my figure of eight weave on. Now, a figure of eight weave or a corset weave is my go-to. It's the, it's the bail that I like to do the most. I find it really therapeutic. I just love the motion of it. And I think it looks really lovely. But you can even do that with like four wires and you can double that up. So whatever type of bail you want to do, you've got all these wires to play with. And again, you can make decorative swirls and things as well. I'm gonna keep it simple for now because we've only got a few minutes. So I'm gonna just keep with those two. And I'm gonna get my weaving wire. Again, I've just popped a little bit onto a bobbin there, but you can keep it on your reel so you don't have to worry about measuring it out. I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna ignore these wires at the end. And these inner wires, I'm just gonna wrap three times onto one and I'm gonna push it right down. 
I will trim off that at some point but for now I've just given myself a little tail end to hold on to I'll trim it off now so you can use them just using the flush side of the cutter there and then with the pliers I'm just gonna tuck it in so we've got no scratchy bits now put these to wherever as wide as you want if they're going really wide then you're gonna have a wide bail if you just want something like this you'll see those two wires twisted have kind of interlocked them but you're creating that kind of V shape so I'm gonna go over under this wire I'll name this one wire one and this one wire two and I'm gonna wrap over the top one or wire two two three times it's up to you but I would keep that consistent so if I wrapped it twice and then bringing it underneath to the other side of wire number one or the bottom one and I'm wrapping that round twice taking it back up to the other side and that's why it's called kind of a figure of eight weave because you've got that kind of figure of eight motion with it so twice over one taking it underneath and over the top bringing it back underneath and I'm just going to keep going with that all the way until I've got kind of the size that I would like. So I don't think I'm going to have time to show you a full completed one, but I can definitely talk you through the process with that. So I'm just going to keep wrapping it round. You can see if I hold it this way, it's got that lovely kind of little corset effect, that lovely little figure of eight motion. So round, however many wraps, up to the other side, round, really lovely to do. And I'm just guiding that round with my finger, you'll see I'm just pushing that into place and I'm keeping it quite taut, which is meaning my weave is gonna come across quite neat. Each time I wrap it round, I'm just guiding that wire so it's sitting next to the last coil or the last wrap, they're not crossing over each other. I mean, I'm speeding up, you take your time with this, but i um, just showing off now, because <laughs> this is my go-to, this is, the, this is the, the bail that I like to do the most. What you can do now is you can shape it, so it's gonna go back in the other direction, so you've created like a little diamond motion, and then I'm just gonna push out, so I still wanna get my wire, in, but where they meet here this is going to be the full size of my bail now you could make this as long as you wanted you'll find because these wires come back in towards each other it does have a little habit of wanting to kind of slip back down so I do just push it down hold it in place with my nail I know your nails are meant to be jewels not tools but I do and then I'm just going to keep wrapping it round keep holding the other side in place as I bring that round and I will continue to wrap all the way back up to the top I don't think I'll have time to to show you but you can see on that um, on the sample that I've made there how that works when I've weaved all the way back up to the top and you know I'm not doing the neatest job here because I am trying to rush I will essentially weave all the way back down to this point here so what I will do is if my wire is finished up here, I will coil that round three times again to secure and then I'm just bending this into shape. So I can show you this on the finished one, but I will bend it just with my fingers or even with my bail step pliers just to get that shape. And I will wrap around the neck of that bail with that weaving wire and then again, probably three times just to secure on the back here and then I would come in with my cutters for the last time and tuck that down and then I've got all these bits to play with so again I can wrap it just as easily as we did to secure before and trim enough I can use all these extras to make lovely swirls, lovely curls. I can make this as elaborate as I want. So um, that is essentially how to make 
day one of our gorgeous birthday calendar. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. I've had the most amazing time today. So thank you to everybody in the studio for, for letting me play. Thank you for watching me. Um, hopefully it won't be too long before you see me again. Take care, everyone. Bye.